Now what happened to the church? The church has become institution, institutionalized. Now we are busy trying our best to protect our institutions. We are wasting our energy in protecting institution. We are not wasting our energy in spreading the word of God. This is the problem of today the church is facing. No wonder the church is being humiliated everywhere. Because the authorities, including me, we all have forgotten the truth. The truth is this. We are only city, we are only a passing pilgrims here on earth. Our real world, our real home, our real country is heaven. We read the word of God, Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. Philippians chapter 3, verse 19, my dear brothers and sisters. Their end is destruction. Let's read verse 18 onwards. Verse 18 onwards. We read like this. For many lives live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Even from the time of Jesus Christ, even from the time of the disciples, many were busy for this world. How to live this world? How to protect our school? How to protect our retreat center? How to protect our hospitals? How to protect our congregation? How to protect our image of the church? How to protect all this? This is the energy that we are spending for this, we are spending maximum energy. We have more than 400,000 priests in this world. But majority of us, the priests are wasting our energy in studying about the world religions, studying about yoga, studying about Hinduism, studying about Islam, and studying about many things, studying about social work, studying about how to run a business, how to uh, MBA and BBA, and all these things. We are wasting our energy for the wrong things, diversions. And this is affecting the church today, my dear brothers and sisters, I, even I'm including me. Once I am Interest with the retreat center. My focus is how to protect this retreat center, how to build up this retreat center. And, and my energy, my time, everything is wasted for that. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not the retreat center should be protected. It is the word of God that should be protected and spread. If the retreat center is taken away, let it be taken away. But the word of God should be continued, my dear brothers and sisters. If the hospitals go, let it go. If the schools go, let it go. Why are we holding on to it? How, hold, how long we can hold on to it? This all will disappear. Only the word will remain. Therefore, we have to refocus. The church has to refocus. Unless and until we refocus, there will not be any more growth. And sometimes God may forget us because this is not the church the Lord has started. Because in the early church, in the Acts of the Apostles, you can see the focus. You can see the apostles. Apostles, they were ready to sacrifice their life for the word of God. They were ready to stand for the right life, stand for the word of God. They were ready to go to the prisons for the word of God. They were not ready to sacrifice their life for uh, institutions or any other institution. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what I have seen in many countries. In front of the government, sometime back, our leaders had the moral power and integrity to challenge the leaders of the secular world. We were able to look at their face and say, you are wrong. But today, we are afraid to tell them you are wrong because we are afraid of losing our schools and colleges and all the other institutions will be controlled and, and taken away by the governments. Therefore, even if they do wrongs, we just keep quiet in the name of safeguarding and other things. And the governments are passing laws against the divine law, abortion and many other things. And we are, our hands and legs and mouths are shut and bound because we have so many pockets and full pockets are full now. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to rethink, including me. Sometimes it is disturbing me too. My own actions are disturbing me. My own positions are disturbing me. And sometimes it is making a big question mark in front of me. Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing here? Is it my real vocation? Is it what I'm called for? 
This is challenging me, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm just sharing my challenges. I'm just sharing with you. It is not a, 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 a any uh, declaration of a, any revolution, or it's just an examination of conscience. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to refocus. The church has to rethink about this focus. Somewhere it has to start from the top or from the bottom. And therefore, this is what the devil works. Devil works about diversion. This is the work of the devil. We read in the word of God, Psalm 119, verse 37. Psalm 119, verse 37. We read, turn my eyes from looking at vanities. All these institutions are vanities. All these positions, we are holding on vanities. You know, sometimes it happens, you know, if we have an aim of getting some high positions, even if the high positions are making mistakes, we will keep quiet and support them. This happens in the churches too, and everywhere in the secular world, everywhere. My dear brothers and sisters, the church has to be a lighthouse in the world. And we need to be a light for the whole world. If we cannot show the morality and the true path in this world, we, what is the use of church in this world? What is the position? The, the church is facing existential crisis today. Some years ago, people used to look at the church and the voice of the church was very strong. Everybody used to respect the voice of the church and everybody used to respect the leaders of the church. But now everyone is making fun of the church, making fun of the leaders. Somewhere we have lost the integrity. And my dear brothers and sisters, we cannot blame anybody. We have to blame ourselves. Our fundamental values of Christian life is gone. Living together. There is no marriage now. People are not interested in sacraments. People are interested in shortcut ways. There is no shortcut. There is only one way. The way of the cross. Jesus said, no one can go to my father but except through me. The way that Jesus shown to us is not express way, not shortcut way, not easy way, not instant way, but the way of the cross. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let us read Titus chapter 3, verse 